The threat of another variant emerging that causes new surges of disease and death remains. And the threat of another pathogen emerging with even deadlier potential remains. And pandemics are from the only are far from the only threat we face. In a world of overlapping and converging crises, an effective architecture for health emergency preparedness and response must address emergencies of all kinds. World Health Organization Chief Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has said that the world must prepare for a virus that is even deadlier than COVID. Dr. Tedros told its annual World Health Assembly in Geneva that it was time to advance negotiations on preventing the next pandemic. Negotiations on new rules for dealing with pandemics are underway at the WHO with a target date of May 2024 for a legally binding agreement to be adopted by the United Nations Health Agency's 194 member countries. A new pact is a priority for WHO chief who called it a generational commitment that we will not go back to the old cycle of panic and neglect. It seeks to shore up the world's defences against new pathogens following COVID-19 pandemic that has killed nearly 7 million people. So what is this pandemic treaty? The WHO already has binding rules known as the International Health Regulations, which in 2005 set out countries' obligations where public health events have the potential to cross borders. These include advising the WHO immediately of a health emergency and measures on trade and travel. Adopted after the 2002 and 3 SARS outbreak, these regulations are still considered appropriate for regional epidemics such as Ebola, but inadequate for a global pandemic. These regulations are also being reviewed in the wake of COVID-19. For the new, more wide-reaching pandemic accord, member states have agreed that it should be legally binding for those who sign up, overcoming early reservations from the United States. However, the proposed treaty has come under fire on social media, mostly from right-wing critics, warning it could lead to countries surrendering authority to the WHO. The body strongly refutes this, stressing that the governments are leading the negotiations and are free to reject the accord. The European Union, which proposed the accord, is seen as its biggest backer. Developing countries, especially in Africa, are keen to use the negotiations to secure better access to vaccines. After five rounds of formal negotiations, the latest 208-page draft of the treaty still includes thousands of brackets, which mark area of disagreement or undecided language, including over the definition of the word pandemic. With so many member countries involved, securing agreement may be tricky. It is not yet clear how the 2005 regulations and the new pandemic accord might fit together. One suggestion is that both should be complementary so that the existing rules apply to local outbreaks and the new rules could come into play if the WHO declares a pandemic, something it does not currently have a mandate to do. It is also not yet clear what happens if the measures are not followed. Separate talks on reforming the 2005 rules are taking place with countries proposing some 300 amendments. Washington's initial proposals aimed to boost transparency and grant the WHO quicker access to outbreak sites. China did allow WHO-led expert teams to visit COVID-19 epicenter in Wuhan, but the WHO says Beijing is still withholding clinical data from early cases that may hold clues about the origins of the COVID virus. Negotiators privately grumble about the overlap between the two sets of talks and a joint meeting to clarify their agenda is also planned.